Hello and a warm welcome from VDE Test Institute in Germany. Precisely, we are here in our modern EMC lab, which is becoming more and more important than in the past. Not only in the field of e-mobility, but also in other technology fields. It is an undisputed fact that the world in which we are living in is multidimensional and subject to rapid change. I do not wish to judge whether or not the world revolves more rapidly than in the past. It's always a matter of individual opinion. But I trust you would also admit that our system life is becoming more and more intricate. Demography illustrates a clear trend back to the urban zone. For 2050, an urban population of roughly 6.5 billion inhabitants is predicted in small, medium and large cities. Distinct polycentric living structures are evolving noticeably more so than today. Simultaneously, the UN Climate Conference in Paris in 2015 set themselves a courageous goal to limit a further global warming to plus two degrees. At this time, we don't want to dwell on whether or not all factors have been taken into consideration. If this is the case, then our supply system must, as a consequence, adapt to these economic changes and requirements. This means, in other words, that our energy supply should also become polycentric. Our energy sources must be more sustainable and environmental. And our business models, in terms of rapid social acceptance, more participative. We are in the midst of a comprehensive transformation process, which is subject to a steady acceleration. Before we lose our bearings, let's take a look at the different transformation levels. The society layer. Here we have to provide a rapid acceptance via participation and fair treatment of all participants. Regulatory layer. The regulatory requirements must be met here for all market participants. However, regulation must follow the needs of the system, not the other way around. An example, any regulation as an end in itself. The business layer. New business models and market roles are invented and developed here. In addition, the systemic approach, an example moving away from proprietary systems to open source models, is developed, tested and implemented. The process layer, decisively important for the international operation of the system developed in the business layer, are uniform semantics, process definitions and most significantly agreement on international standards transparent, solidly founded, discrimination-free. Technology layer. Last but not least, all technological aspects such as ICT, safety, security also requires a special focus during transformation. By way of summary, the key factors to success from a technical social perspective are definitely safety, security, interoperability and social acceptance. From a purely economical aspect, bankability, investability, insurability and return of investment. Please allow me to focus on two aspects of the key success factors. The polycentric energy supplies and the resulting demands on communication systems, respectively on the IT security fundamentals. Clearly driven by the increase of volatile in-feed sources as well as participative business models, our energy supply infrastructure is rapidly changing from a classic top-down structure into a sort of internet type. What does this actually mean in practice? Load flows and consumption flows are multidimensional, from top to bottom, top-down, left to right, occasionally diagonal if you allow me this non-technical slide. This has consequences for the measurement technology, open loop control and control engineering. Just consider the hetero predominant old utility meters. Security systems, think about simple fault current service breakers. Communication technology, you may recollect that the distribution network is practically never visible from the power plant. And when combining all these aspects, the necessary IT security aspect. 
The networking of the intelligent subsystems becomes more and more essential for the energy system of the future. The following technical challenges come to mind. Network stability and network topology, interoperability, integration of storage management systems and recycling at the end of the life cycle. It sounds straightforward, is technical but still a challenge. In the transition from the top-down structure into polycentric one, grid codes for connecting generation plants and supplies and storage facilities to the network must be complied with further development of standards. Aspects such as frequency stability, black start capability or protective systems, to name a few examples. The complexity of the system itself can be seen on the following graph. Allow me to highlight one aspect from the group of topics related to the network stability, the voltage stability. As you can see in the blue curve, the high volatility associated with the feeding in medium voltage levels and distribution networks generates a massive voltage fluctuation in the grid, temporarily outside of the permitted range. For example, in Germany, plus minus 10%. In order to not automatically end up with production or load shedding, the fluctuations must be balanced out. See the green curve. But there are already solutions for this. One example out of many is the distribution grid station, which acts as a connecting element between the medium and low voltage level. If we regulate these in the future, the complete voltage range, in our example plus minus 10%, will be available to both grid levels. A much higher percentage of systems and consumers, for example e-mobility, can be incorporated without the imminent danger of being forcibly disconnected from the grid every time there is an excess in-feed, for example heavy winds or heavy sunshine. Communication is a prerequisite for control and regulation. Let's finish by taking a look at the aspect of interoperability and IT security. The basic prerequisites for connected interoperable systems can be summed up in three columns. Structure, in example the development of a uniform standardized model that acts as a reference. Technology, the development of non-proprietary components and systems, interfaces and platforms. And last but not least, semantics, in example the development of a common language. Once these basic prerequisites have been met, we still need harmonized and independent test systems that can make clear statements about the ability or non-ability to be interoperable. An example of this is the VDE Test Institute's remote test system. We are talking about connected systems, we are talking about partial or fully self-sufficient systems and we are talking about communication across system limits. And we are now in the middle of the third and last aspect that I want to shed light on today. IT security and cyber security. You are all perfectly aware that with the energy system we are a perfect target for potential hackers, just like our finance system, our mobility system, our production system and, as already said, our energy system. Instead of hiding behind the typical IT security myths, and I'm still astounded by this, everyone in a position of responsibility must confront key questions such as how do we monitor our system during operation? Do we have a system and a plan for reacting before, during and after an event? If we do so, how often do we adapt this system to the speed of change of reality? And other key questions that you can see in this overview. When developing or monitoring an IT security system, it is important to understand what motivates the different hackers into our systems. Only when we have understood these can we derive suitable standards, system designs, processes, methods and measures. When we have understood the focus, we can compare it against the IT security architecture level in the other dimension. This affects the hardware level, the software level, the data level and at the end the user level. A structured matrix emerges here that describes focus specific methods and standards. And I have now reached the last aspect and the end of my remarks. 
standards are essential for the technical and economical stability and sustainable development of markets. In the field of IT security, these are still lacking. In other areas, such as our energy system, there are already long established standards. Standards open markets, standards provide direction, checkability and hence security. We at VDE have many decades of experience in developing standards and quality criteria. We invite you to develop independent standards for all of our IT security together with us in one common platform. Thank you very much for your active participation and until next time, wherever that may be in our interconnected world.